Hello class. Today's lesson is on the mammalian skeleton. This is lesson two of the skeletal system and the subject is core biology. I'm Miss Eugenia in Tiaminsa. Let's begin. All right, for our lesson, the learning objective, at the end of the day, you should be able to differentiate between the types of skeleton. Describe the functions of the mammalian skeleton as well. So our key terms, we have endoskeleton, endoskeleton, exoskeleton, exoskeleton, cartilage, cartilage, rigid, rigid, flexible, flexible, bone marrow, bone marrow framework framework attachment attachment so by the end of the day you should be able to familiarize yourself with these words that you have learned or will be learning today now let's begin for our lesson one we had an assignment to differentiate between bone and cartilage and distinguish between endoskeleton and exoskeleton. I believe you're able to do this research very well. Very good. So today our lesson will be on these um, differences that is the assignment I gave you and then we'll zoom in further to look at functions of the mammalian skeleton. All right. So for today, as you may well have noticed from your assignment, the endoskeleton and exoskeleton refers to the types of skeleton so we have two types of skeleton we have the endoskeleton and exoskeleton when you hear endo what comes to mind yes inside internal inward so we are looking at a type of skeleton which lies internal or within the soft tissues of the body. Now, what will be the opposite of internal or an endoskeleton? Yes, exoskeleton, which means the skeleton is external or lies outside the soft tissues of the body. Now, an example, as you may well see right in front of you. When you look at me, what do you see? Flesh, right? You see my skin. And you see whatever covers my skeleton. At a first glance, you don't see my skeleton, right? Good. Now, this is the type of skeleton we are referring to as an endoskeleton because the skeleton is found within the soft tissues of the body. So this is what we mean by an endoskeleton. Now, when you are chewing crab or when you are eating crab, you see you first break into the hard tissues. Like that's the hard part of the body, which is its skeleton. Before you get into the sweeter and softer portions which you take in the food. That's your the food, right? Yes. Now the hard part that you crunch into is the skeleton of the crab. Now unlike us, they have an exoskeleton because the skeleton is external and lies outside the soft tissues of the body. I hope you get a difference between an endoskeleton and an exoskeleton. Very good. So these are examples of organisms with an endoskeleton. To my left here, we have the human, the bird, and the dog. We have it means we have mammals as well as birds having an endoskeleton. It means that bone is internal, skeletal system is internal. And then we have an example of an exoskeleton being we have crabs, lobsters, spiders, and whatnot. Yes, so scorpions and the rest, they all have an exoskeleton because it is external to the soft tissues of the body. Very good, let's continue. Now, the composition of the mammalian skeletal tissue. Looking at our assignment, I asked you to differentiate between bone and cartilage, right? Yes. Now the mammalian skeleton consists of these two tissues, which is the bone 
and the cartilage. Now, when you are chewing a piece of chicken, you see you crunch into the harder bits. Now, this harder bits is known as bone. Now, within the bone, you find some softer material in there. Sometimes, if the meat was not cooked well, you find it's a little bloody, right? Yes. Now, internal the bone, that's what you are referring to as the bone marrow. Now, this is where red blood cells are produced. Yes. Now, you see, after, as you are chewing the chicken, you see on the drumstick, at the very edge, you see, if the, this is the drumstick, at the very edge, you find there is a soft, whitish uh, part of the chicken, the drumstick, which you can easily remove from the bone on top of the bone yes and it's crunchy when you try chewing yes that is what is known as the cartilage so in the body of the organism you find the cartilage lies within two bones now the cartilage serves to cushion you know provide flexibility to allow for easy movements you see if it's not there you find there is a hard surface wrapping on a hard surface you know what friction can cause yes so the cartilage is there to reduce this friction and enable easy and flexible movements very good now this is the bone and that is the cartilage you have there so progressing we want to look at the differences between bone and cartilage what did you find i believe it's quite similar to what we are going to learn today so for one bone cannot be bent or stretched the bone is fixed to a particular place such that you cannot bend this part of your body you cannot bend it because of the bone because the bone is um is straight at this edge you get it yes unlike cartilage which can be bent and folded easily at certain parts of the body which parts of your bodies have cartilage yes you have it here your nose you see i can easily move this cartilage here because it is easily flexible and then also my ears i can easily turn and manipulate my ears in all directions because in it you find cartilage right yes so these are some places in our bodies where we find cartilage and it is softer and flexible as you could see that I could easily manipulate it into every part, into different parts, into different places. Unlike the bone which is hard and rigid. The bone contains living tissues. As I was saying, you see when you break into a bone, you find it has blood and nerve tissues. The bone marrow. Yes, that is where your red blood cells are produced. Along with this, you have other minerals such as calcium and phosphorus. That's why it's recommended that you take in a lot of calcium-rich diets, you know, for strong bones and teeth because the calcium strengthens the bones. So in the bones, you expect to find these minerals, but you don't find this in cartilage. It doesn't contain any minerals and it doesn't contain any living tissues. That's why it's whitish. It contains just protein. Yes. Now with bone, it provides skeletal support and shape to the body. This is one function of the bone. Now with cartilage, it provides flexibility to the body and smoothens bone surfaces and joints. It makes movement of the bone easier. All right, let's move on. So we are going to look at functions of the skeletal system. All right. So with functions of the skeletal system, we have one, it forms the framework of the body. Now your entire body, let's take your skeleton out of it. What would you have left? Yes, just a mass of skin, which will not have any shape. It will just lie flat on the floor. So our skeleton forms our framework. It gives us our shape such that you have the dog bending down because of its skeleton structure. You have the bed, you know, in that shape because of its skeletal system. And then you have humans also upright because of our framework. 
I hope this is very clear. Good. And it provides surfaces for attachment of muscles. Now, in what you have the bone, and then you have muscles attaching. Now, this is what is important for movement. Such that once you move your arm this way, there are some muscles that contract and relax to bring about movement. So these muscles are attached to the skeleton. So they provide surfaces for attachment of muscles. And then also it supports the body, as has been explained already. These are some other functions of the skeletal system. Now I protect the internal organs of the body. What are some internal organs of the body or some organs of the body? Yes. We have the eyes, the ears, the nose. But you see, these ones are quite external. But even that, they are protected by the skull. The skull is part of the skeleton. Now, inward, when you look here, you have your ribs, right? Your rib cage. Now, this protects vital organs. Which vital organs do you find in this region of your body? Yes, you are right. A very essential organ, which is the heart. Now, without your heart, you cannot be a living being. Now, imagine if your skeleton is not there and someone just hits your chest. It will go straight to your heart and cause permanent injuries. So, your skeleton is there to protect these vital and internal organs. It also stores and releases fat, as well as produces blood cells. Now, this is done in the bone marrow. That's why sometimes when you break through a ch chicken which is not properly cooked, you find it bloody in there. That's because the blood cells are produced in the bone marrow. So if it's not well cooked, you'll find that there's blood still in the bone marrow. Yes. Now it also stores and releases minerals. These minerals, the most basic one, or the one we all know, is calcium for strong bones in teeth. And then also we have phosphorus. Now it facilitates movement. This I've already spoken about as well as it supports the body. Now these are various functions of the mammalian skeleton. I believe that today you've learned something and you'll be able to better understand the assignment that was given in lesson one, right? Very good. So for today we looked at types of skeleton where we looked at the endoskeleton and the exoskeleton and then we also looked at the composition of the mammalian skeleton and the functions of the mammalian skeleton i hope you've learned a lot today now assignment for our next lesson you identify the major parts of the mammalian skeleton and indicate one function each of the parts you have identified i hope you can do this research very well very good now we are closing off our class for today with this assignment we'll meet in our next class and thank you for your attention have a great week